Hey everyone, it's Tracy and Angela and I are back for another esthetician talk. Hey Angela. Hello Tracy, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Good, good. Your skin looks so good, you're so like, uh, I don't know, your skin just looks fresh. It's just, <laughs> so nice. You know, somebody said that to me last time too. Um, I actually, when I do some of the Zoom meetings, I use the vanilla and um, vanilla and coconut facial scrub. I know this is a kind of here. So I get that up there. That's there you, go. you gotta be the hot. you gotta like be the light. beauty guru and put your hand yeah. behind the thing and do that. Yeah, that's, I, that's what I know beauty. it's so silly, but it really for Zoom is like ah. <laughs> but seriously, your cheeks are so like highlighted from the yeah. Light I know, is it wild? <laughs> it, it, so it is. It's great to do right before like an event or you know a Zoom if you don't want to look. Tired, I need so. some of that because I'm going to do that during the next, before the next esthetician talk. All right. We'll try it. We'll yeah. do it. All yeah. right. Cool. We'll see if I deal. reflect light off my cheeks like you are. <laughs> <laughs> like hydrating glow. Yes. Yes. Cool. Okay. So our topic today, and you are the, well, I don't say expert at this because you are, you're the injector and we are talking about Botox and filler. Correct. Correct. And then we're going to do th uh, this in just a very relaxed manner yes. because I don't want to take this, have somebody take this uh, video as legal advice. This is no. really as if you're talking to a couple of gal pals who yep. have had it or the ins and outs of it. Don't get, you know, um, wrapped up in the nitty gritty of the medical part. If, if, if that's the case, see your local practitioner. Yes. You know, and that's what I want to reiterate too. This is the reason you know why we do these or why we started wanting to do these it's like in layman's terms it's like we're talking and that's why I specifically wanted to talk about this because I know you when you know something you know you just assume that maybe other people know the information you know mm -hmm. yes and, and, then, and even when it is medical I, you know for for like let's say if somebody were to describe it to you in a medical language like this interrupts the receptors of your nerve nerves and blah 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 you know it's it's still very overwhelming for people so we'll just kind of we'll make it just easier and to talk about instead of throwing you know big medical terms around okay, i'll explain my experience with both botox and fillers i love I, that yeah I, yes. I had filler put in under my eye once before and it was traumatic Oh, okay. We'll That's why I don't ever it. do them under my eyes anymore, but I'll share my story. But okay. first to begin, what is the difference? Some people don't know what fillers do and some people, you, you know, they don't know the difference of what does what. Okay, so we'll keep this easy. Yep. So um, I like to say Botox is like a muscle relaxer. So any area we need to relax your muscles is typically where Botox goes. So um, it's like a muscle relaxer, but it interrupts. Well, I'm not gonna go in the medical part, okay? Um, we'll keep this easy. And then, uh, so, brownie, where everybody goes like this. The when you raise up. Yeah. And these guys up here, because yep. when you relax these muscles, they have a tendency to let the body rebuild its natural tissue. So when we do Botox, it's not gonna instantly go away. When you get the Krabby crack, a lot of my clients call it the Krabby crack. <laughs> it's usually because they're looking at their kids. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. so um, here, um, when you frown, um, the line begins to get deeper or a couple lines get, because you're, you're constantly uh, making that face and the muscle contracts, which breaks down the tissues in the area. So when we do Botox, or there's other names for it, which we'll quickly talk about. Um, then when we relax the area, then you can't frown as hard. And then the body begins to fill in the tissue naturally. So we tell people about 14 days to a month. I tell people wait for the full month to see results because uh, we have to slowly work the line out. Now, if the line's really deep, it's going to take a couple sessions, meaning that when the Botox wears off, you're going to want to do it again. So if you have a really deep, crabby crack, <laughs> that's a common area, um, then it might take you a couple rounds, like just plan maybe the whole year, but it will look better as, as time goes on. So it, it, it doesn't maybe completely fix it right away if you have a deep line. 
but if you do it enough, it starts to look relaxed. It looks a little more fresh. It looks a little more better. And then plus I tell people too, it's not like we want to completely erase your line. Otherwise people get suspicious. Then they're like, you did something. What'd you do? Oh, it's like what I say with makeup. You want to look like you when we say this, mm -hmm. just, I don't want to say better, but more refreshed more. So you still look like you. Yeah, you don't want to look fake, right? Everybody knows the fake people they see on TV that um, you've seen, you yes. know, we've yeah. seen that. Yeah. Um, and so, okay, frown, uh, forehead, um, and crow's feet. So um, those are all areas where you, a muscle contraction. And um, we can do here. So uh, that helps us kind of like the smoker lines. Okay, there's a catch-22 with that though. So if we relax these lines, we're relaxing the muscle. So what happens is that it can be harder for you to say your P's and Q's within a first week. It, it can relax and go away, you know. So to people who drink through straws or smoke, you know, it's going to be harder to purse your lips. Uh, it doesn't mean completely. So typically I don't like to do Botox down here because if you relax this muscle, it can drop the oh. size. Yeah, we don't want those, do we? Yeah, so I don't, you can do a lot, like in the chin, if you get those little dimples, you can do a little bit there, or the neck bands. So if and you get the neck, like if you have that straight, what is it called? If, if you can, uh, platysmal bands. So if you can pull a band out, you can do a little bit into the band and to relax it and soften it. It's not a fix, a complete fix. It just softens. I tell people, don't expect it to take all the wrinkles away on your neck. It's just to soften. Um, we can also do... Um, around the brow tails to actually gently lift the tail into your brows. So um, that actually turns the muscle upwards. So that's a, um, a little technique. It's just a little bit. It's not, you know, I mean, it's not going to lift somebody who has a really heavy lid. It's just going to slightly lift the area. So um, those are the most common areas for Botox on the face. I mean, it's widely used in the body too, but that's the most. So uh, filler, what does filler do? Volume yes. Yeah, so filler comprise a hyaluronic acid, so it's pretty natural your body, although it is synthetically made, um, but it mimics your body's natural moisture barrier and volumizes. So typically, um, a lot of the big names are hyaluronic acid fillers and generally pretty safe. Um, so areas we lose volume, <laughs> the marionettes. Yeah. Here. So you don't want to put Botox here because what happens is you, you you need these muscles to make your facial movements, right? We can put filler into the lips, um, sometimes above the lips. That might be the alternative so you don't have trouble um, saying your P's and Q's. Um, filler can be placed in the cheeks to um, lift. Um, some physicians, I don't do this, but will do the temples. Um, up in the eye area, which you talked about, which I don't do. I mean, that is, um, I think more of an, like right up in here you know, is, is kind of like right up in this area is a little bit more advanced technique. I have a tendency to stay down lower. So, um, you know, those are the most common areas for, for filler. It's a volumized an area. So Botox and relaxes the muscles. Filler volumizes. Volumizes. So it's filling yes. something in, like if you have deep lines right here, it plumps them up so you can't, they aren't mm -hmm. as noticeable. Yeah, and I tell people don't go for a complete elimination. Um, they, some people nitpick at themselves, and especially when they get this guy out here that gets a little deep, or out here, a couple of those um, natural smile lines that kind of creep up on us here. Um, just go for a reduction, not perfection, because if, if we um, bring out completely the shadows, then it doesn't look right, because even, even young people have some, you know, some, some volume that's not in that area. You know, it's, it's a pretty normal look. So I just tell people this, you know, let's lessen, but not go completely, you know. And like with the microblading, I always say I'm conservative to start out because I can always add more. I can't take away. Although I know there is a product that you can dissolve yes. the filler if you want to. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. So um, there is a product that will, if you, uh, it's for hyaluronic acid. So that the general HA fillers, if you want to stay safe um, and you're afraid you don't like it, then just choose a hyaluronic acid base uh, because there is a dissolver for that. And if you don't like it, it can just be injected and it instantly goes. So then you're like, bye. <laughs> Try it. Don't like it. Done. 
so that's there nice. Are colors that's... You can't do that with. So um, people, if they know what they like, they've had it done before, they might choose a longer lasting filler. I do not do those. Um, they are going to be more expensive. Um, normally, most physicians will inject that. But that is something that, you know, isn't easily dissolved. So well, our, and that is good to know that not all fillers, you know, can be dissolved like that. Yeah, yeah, some can't. So um, I, I tell people if you're dipping your toe into it, you're have um, you're a little scared that you're not going to like it. HAs are a great way to go because if you hate it, it can be dissolved, and they're pretty. Um, they're pretty hydrating fillers, um, very flexible, malleable. They have a tendency not to get too lumpy, bumpy underneath the skin, especially the new ones. Was the older brands years ago, maybe five years ago, might have felt more lumpy, but uh, companies have come a long way, so they just feel softer, more flexible. So if you do get a little lumping underneath the skin, you just do a gentle massage and, and it can come right out. So um, I always just think of it as you know, more of a you know, flexible product. Yeah. But that's what is nice is over time, it just keeps getting better and better. They come out with better products. Oh, yeah. And easy, better and easy. And um, the biggest side effects risks um, is um, swelling in the area, bruising. Um, it is a poke in the face. You know, you know, don't go to your practitioner and say, hey, tomorrow I'm seeing all my girlfriends. Um, I'd like okay. my lips done. Because unless if you're wearing a mask. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you go like a little used and abused it's a it's a poke it's a poke in the face and yeah. um that will have some swelling and possible bruising with it so those are and that's a um botox is not likely to have as much swelling but it could also have bruising too so that one's a little bit injected in the muscle so in and out so we're in and out quick so boop 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 you know just like through the muscle and then that's what um, i do so i do disport and angela does my disport for me Yay, yes. she's so great at it. Um, Thanks. And so let's talk about that, like with uh, Botox. Botox is uh, uh, brand name. a brand name. That's it. Thank you. That's what I was thinking of. So when we say Botox, what's interesting, like I said before, it's like saying Coke, you know, like in the South, they say mm -hmm. Coke, but you're like, mm -hmm. no, I want 7-Up or I want this. So mm -hmm. what are some of the other names? I just said Disport. What are some of the other names that it goes Coming out with so many now. Um, so, okay, the big two rival ones, uh, Botox and Dysport, um, are the head headliners. So I always tell people, you know, Botox makes Juvederm yep. and Dysport makes Restylane. And chances oh. are people have heard of one or the other. So they're both very great companies. They compete heavily with each other. And I, I do feel like those two are the head gold standard. Um, as far as treatment care is considered, they are diluted a little differently. So I, as a consumer, do not get wrapped up in units because um, every practice has their own way and, and there can be more than one way to dilute a product. So w when you walk in to get a treatment, just ask about the cost of the area. I wouldn't get wrapped up in saying, well, you know, my last practitioner did 20 units, so I only get 20 units. Oh, and right. then they dilute it differently, your treatment can come out with a different outcome. And, um, you know, because there's uh, like at least Disport has three different ways you can dilute the product and none of them are wrong. Right. So it's just the way the practitioner does their treatment. So um, I, I just tell people, let the practitioner decide for you and, let, and just tell them the area you want. So brown, you know, that's this considered one area. Um, frontalis or uh, forehead muscle, that's considered a second area down here. That's a different area too. So I just, I say, just go by the area that you want treated. And you'd be surprised. Um, I let people tell me because um, some people may feel like their frown really bothers them. So they'll do that. And they're like, but I'm really fine with these because you know what? My bangs cover them. You right. know? That's me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, and yeah. I'll tell you my story with Botox. I, uh, when I ran the medical spas, I ran one and the doctor said I was almost 40 and he's like, you know, Tracy, let's do some Botox on you. And I said, no, I don't want to do it until I have to do it. You know, okay, like yeah. that was my thing. Like I, I didn't want it. And he's like, oh, come on, you know? And I'm like, well, okay, if you're offering free Botox. <laughs> you're not going to say no, right? Yeah. And yeah. so he did it. And honestly, 
it's kind of something that once you see yourself, it's a subtle change. I mean, you know, most people, they aren't going to look at you unless you're overdone, like with fillers mm -hmm. or something and say, oh my gosh, what's wrong with you? You're yeah. just going to look fresher. It's yeah. not supposed to be that big of a difference, but me personally, after I got it done, I was mm -hmm. like, wow, you know, okay. And then honestly, once you do it, and I'm truth telling that you kind of get hooked on the look, even though, like I said, to other people, they probably might not even notice. And I yeah. feel too, like now that I've been doing it so long, like I don't need to do it as much as I used to. And now I like this port more than I like Botox. And now yes. I only do it like every five months or so, just when I feel like I, I want to have it. Do you know what I mean? It's not that big a deal. I don't freak out if I can, yeah. you know, because I can still raise my yeah. forehead. Yeah, so natural movement. And um, you do go to an element of maintenance, hopefully. Yeah. So, um, you know, and I find that at one point you, you just don't get the wrinkles back as quickly because you were consistent before. This is where we go, that consistency again. Right. And then so yeah. your, your skin hasn't broken down quite as much as, let's say, someone who's never really done it before. So it, it you know, stops the breakdown into that area um, temporarily. And um, so when we do... Is it preventative do, then too? Like, let's say, because you know, girls are getting it done, which personally I mean it's a personal choice but you know they're 19 20 you know I, I've had a few and as long as I mean they as long it, you know one of the biggest things is that their parents have a heavy line wherever they're treating so it's commonly the the frown and I've had gals at 23 even say I've already got it you know can we can we treat it and and the answer is, yeah, you know, if, if and we just, I call it baby Botox. Yeah. Wait, I mean, we just do a tiny bit. It's, yeah. it's like maybe a full dose. And it's just to um, help relax the muscle. And, um, but of course, the patient has to be old enough to make a decision. Usually it's college age, you know, college yeah. girls are on, on the up and up on it, you know. So, so that's it too. You can spot treat. It, you don't have to do a full vial or, oh. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Some people like think they thought that you had to buy it by, but do you buy it by either half a vial or a whole, or not a vial? No, that's filler. Yep. So filler is typically done by a half or a full vial, and that it can be a little tricky because um, a lot of times, you know, we it can be stored. So something like Dysport and Botox, when you draw it up. It, it, whatever's in the vial, it has to be used that, that treatment and that's it. You know, we can't save that. Um, whereas um, fillers, technically you can save. Every practice has their own um, rule about that. And it can be stored for so long before it just, it does get a little dry and then you don't want to use it. So, um, and, and so sometimes it's good to save a little bit leftover for people for a, a touch up, like if an area you know, needs a, because uh, we're not, we're all asymmetrical. So um, for most people, left side is normally worse than their right side. For me, actually, my right side ages faster than my left. I don't know why. But, um, you know, after a month or so, somebody can just pop back in and maybe get a little touch up in like a corner that is being a, a bit more um, stubborn than the other. So that's good to know, too, because we talked about if you're just dipping your toe in, you can start conservative with filler and be like, okay, that's enough. And then, you know, if you're like, oh, okay, and you sit with it for a while, if you had some left, yeah. you could come back for a little more. Yeah, and I like the practices that allow people to be a little more conservative instead of the bottom line. So, um, you know, just using it and in, in helping the person get their toe into it, like you said, and then not feeling overwhelmed. Worst case scenario, they can come back in a couple of weeks and have a, a little touch up. And that way, then the person knows how they respond to the product, and, and they don't have to worry about a, a big reaction, and how, is it going to look scary? So a conservative approach is, is generally very nice. Well, and so I'll tell you my story about filler, my one and only time with filler. So uh, I went to a doctor, and uh, mm -hmm. but I'm trying to think of what he was. Anyway, and I knew him. And, but he went through, and I had never done filler before, so I didn't know like how it worked. And he literally stuck the needles through here and stuck it all the way up 
and then like moved it around. And I oh, thought that was he, yes. did he go underneath your your lip and into oh, this way enough would, or just right here enough? I think he went here enough. Yeah, he didn't go under my lip. Oh, it was okay. yeah, weird. But anyway, so by oh. the time he was done, I mean, I'm serious, I looked down and I could not see like you know what I mean, like I would look down and <laughs> couldn't see and I got big cheeks I mean this is my face I don't have any filler anywhere you know in here <laughs> this is my mom's face yeah I have a uh, big cheeks but anyway um so yeah so this was like the equal to this <laughs> so, oh. and like you said too you don't want to go anywhere afterwards and I thought oh the swelling's gonna go down do you know what I mean it all like and it never did and at the time, oh, I didn't it. know that, or maybe I did, that, that you could get it, you know, dissolved and stuff. But by the time I paid the money, <laughs> for, oh, so I just... Oh, yeah, I, that does kind of sound... Oh, yeah. Okay, so, you know, a lot of times, like, for for volumizing, I mean, people lose their fat pad. It's right here, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So if you can find your finger and press an indent along this area right here, yes. that's where a good, nice little volume is here. Up here, though, um, I usually leave to, like, my medical director or yes. any uh, qualified plastic surgeon. Um, it's a tricky getting, like, up here because you can look exactly like you said. Or it's some people, it pushes the veins up towards the surface of the skin, so then it looks terrible and then some people if it's if it's done well it looks lovely so you know I've had a lot of people too that it looks great so they can fill in a little hollow and it looks really nice and that's I think too there's a lot of blood vessels right here so uh, more danger to your eye for um you know in getting into a blood vessel and causing blindness so the, hence why I don't do Quite like up in this area, you know, when people ask me, I just say, yeah, go to a to a surgeon. <laughs> well, and that's it too. He was not a surgeon, and you know, oh. after that, I learned my lesson, and so now I just do the disport here. Like I said, I have a full face enough. Thank goodness, like I don't have you know here. And it's funny because when I was younger, I used to think, oh, I have a fat face that you know makes me whatever. And now that I'm older, I'll be 55 in a couple of weeks. I'm very oh, grateful yeah. that I have a fat face. Yeah, be grateful of the fat padding on the face. Yeah. Because sometimes they do fat graft and they'll take your own fat and put it in your face too, which a lot of people are like, I love that idea because it's natural. It still is yeah. a considered a, a, a surgery surgical procedure and that's something to know um it's still being injected fat into the face and the body can dissolve a certain level of it naturally so um sometimes i've heard that physicians may have to overfill a little bit because your body might dissolve some of it but do not hold me to that because i don't know if techniques have changed so well, and then let's just talk about if someone is thinking about it but has never had it before. And I can tell you my experience with Angela, because when I get um, Dysport done, uh, mm -hmm. you know, like she said, you're getting needles stuck in your face. And my yeah, thing is, the face. like I said, mostly right here for me is what, mm -hmm. and, and again, it still looks natural. I still have crinkles when I smile, but it just helps relax it and, you know, my forehead. But again, I, you know, I wear bangs, so that isn't a big, I don't want to say concern for me. I like to have it there. So like you said, it gives yeah. it a chance to not and One area we really can't treat very well is when you raise your forehead up and you get this like line that goes right about here. Yep. That is a little difficult to treat because if you think of like Botox or Dysport as a muscle relaxer. <laughs> oh yeah. That's what's happened to people though. That's uh, I know a celebrity, actually it was Christy Brinkley, she oh. said that she had gotten it and it made her, it droop. Yeah, yeah. And that's probably because either there's like um, an area through here that if you relax the muscle too much, it can just drop. Some people drop very easy. That I mean, naturally their brow might kind of come down a little bit, and, you know, just a little bit within the first couple of weeks of it that has a tendency to go away. But if you're, if you're trying to get at this guy, um, this could potentially happen. And then so most practitioners are probably going to just tell you they can't do it because um, you can do a little filler though. You can do a tiny bit of filler for this this spot um it's still a muscle activity but the uh, 
the you don't want to we don't want to drop your brows and, but, and the thing is too so if you're worried about the pain because i know that some people want it but they're worried mm -hmm. you know again you're getting a needle stuck in your face and yeah. you know, by your eye but um like with angela she gives me a cold pack mm -hmm. to set on it before we do anything and yeah. then um we take it away and you know the pain the needle is small Oh yeah, it's it's very tiny. Think diabetic um, in, insulin needle sizes. It's it's yep. tiny. It's I I tell people I describe it like a mosquito snout. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A mosquito snout. It's more like a sting. <laughs> yeah, but and then but it's only in for a second, and then you're moving yeah. on to the next part. Yeah. So yeah. it's not bad at a pain level of like one to ten. I would say the most has been like a three. Yeah, it's not too bad. And, and you know, if you're really concerned, you can always ask your practitioner if if there's an over-a-counter topical lidocaine you can grab and put on 15 minutes prior to your session. Um, usually we like you to do that not your first time, but, you know, once you we know how your body does with all the products, um, then, you know, your subsequent times, if you're like, oh, I don't want to, if you're really dreading it, maybe you can just pick up a little Lido over-the-counter lidocaine. And then yeah. be careful too about the lidocaine, knowing that you're not allergic to it or anything too. Yeah. I used to work uh, in, uh, I ran the uh, hair removal, laser hair removal spot. And we used to put like uh, the, what is it, beforehand where we'd wrap Probably it around. Pain. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, beforehand. <laughs> but you know what? And again, it's a, it's a very small pain level for the return. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then, like you said, just if you're using like a um, topical lidocaine, just a small area, don't slather yes. your body in it. It's still a medication. You yeah. don't want to get toxicity. Um, so that's a good one. So we had um, Dysport and Botox are the big yeah. headliners for um, Botox World. Um, there's Xenoman. I cannot say that. Xenoman, that's another <laughs> one. I, I, I don't use it. I don't know how it reacts. Um, and then uh, Juvo is kind of the newer Botox. It's the pure Botox. That's how they like to advertise themselves. So, you know, if, if you're going to a practitioner and you don't know which one, uh, chances are go with whatever they're the most comfortable with. So if if you feel like your friend, you saw her, and she got nice results with that practitioner, then chances are, you know, I wouldn't go in and fight for a certain brand. I would just go in and just be like, yeah, whatever you think is going to make me look good. And that way, you know, your treatment is the, whatever they're the most comfortable with as chances are is what you're going to look the best with. So if they're doing Botox all day long, um, that brand and they love it, you might look great with that. If, if it's Dysport, it might look great with that. I've used them both. Um, I tell you the truth, I naturally kind of converted a lot of people more towards the Dysport end, but I did have a lot of clients in the 30, 40 something range, and it seemed to work very nice for them because they wanted movement. They wanted to raise their brows, they want to frown, you know, and they didn't want to have the flat face frozen. Yeah. 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 No, that's perfect. And so for the fillers, uh, what are some, you know, we talked about Juvederm and Restylane. I know yes. there's one that's called Kiss. Is that a Kiss is one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah there's a new one for lips. About that. Yeah. yeah. Kiss is really pretty. It's a very flexible. Um, I find it has minimal swelling when doing treatments, a lot less. So is that um, just for the lips then or yes. is that yeah. okay? And you know, some practitioners I think put in like for the lips um in, with a cannula, so they make a little tiny hole and then do a cannula to fill. Um, I personally haven't been um, too lured into that because I like the artistic of sometimes creating um, more of a cupid's bow or, you know, um, giving more definition in certain areas. I don't feel like with a cannula, I probably could do something like that. And that's it too. Like just, I just want to stop while you brought that up, that it is an artistic thing. Like it gives you, uh, you can create, um, certain look right yes and so you know what the client the wants up. they aren't all just going to look the same you yeah. could help like if they say oh i want more of a cupid's bow or i'd like this you can mm -hmm. 
help them with that. Yeah. And then so I find that like uh, um, not doing a mainstream filler, but doing the like, new kiss has more for the lips. I, I think the competitor to that might be Vobella from Juvederm's product line. And, um, you know, pro I'm sure practitioners love that too. So um, kiss has been the new one, especially with the swelling being reduced and uh, ladies love fuller, softer lips without looking um, plastic or, or fake. Like the, Big, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. everybody asks about looking ducky. And right. um, the, the trick about looking ducky is um, so actually having your lower lip a little bit bigger than your upper is, is the what commonly, but you know, actually some ladies like symmetry. So that's what I find too. Some people like having their upper lip a little fuller than their lower. And some people have like having their lips match the same size. And just whatever looks good on them. So, I mean, if it looks good, then, you know, there's no hard, fast rule to it. But that's, and that's, these are the things that I think people may not know, that it's not just a one-fits-all, one-size-fits-all oh, for no. this. See, and it's and not that's, that way I for Botox either. Are, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, no, so that's what I, like, want to get out about fillers and Botox, because I think a lot of times people don't understand. And it's going to the right person. Mm -hmm. I mean... In, in the Botox too, um, like if your girlfriend has, and she's like, I have it placed up here and I have it placed over here. You know what I mean? If, if she says one thing, it, it's not going to be the same on you because your muscles might be sitting a little different. The structure, just some people I place a little bit more central. Some people I do have to place a little bit more outside. I, it's all based on the person's face, facial structure. And I, I, I've learned really quick not to have people tell me where to place it if they've seen others before and said my practitioner placed it you know right here right, <laughs> and right. I, I will not be doing that to you because <laughs> I know the auto <laughs> and it's like makeup I mean people uh you know I know for their bone structure like where I'm putting certain things yes. you know it, it is it's an artistic thing and so that's what you're doing with when you're the artist or, you know, the person administering it, you have to trust that they know what they're doing. Yeah, and just let, let them decide, figure it out, tell them how you were hoping your treatment will turn out. And sometimes you can bring in visual pictures, but if you do not look like Kim Kardashian, then um, don't bring Kim Kardashian in. <laughs> right. Kim Kardashian has probably spent a lot of money on her treatments and has- and She's had multiple. multiple, she's not just getting disport. Right, yes, so and a lot of stuff is Photoshop. So people will bring me Photoshop oh, lips. Yes. And I'm like, oh, you know, your lips are not going to turn out like that, you it's know. Like it's not even reality. Those aren't even real. So. Yeah, that's not even real. Yeah. Um, it, you know, practical, it might be your lips, but a little bigger. There, there can be some tweaks, though. We can sometimes raise the border, sometimes, you know, outline it a little bit more. Um, so I like to shape them at times, too. But with bruising, do you have any tips on how people can cover with makeup or like what you well, And I would say too, like you said in the beginning, it's planning. Do you know what I mean? Like really, when I um, like get my Dysport, I know that I'm probably going to have a couple, you know, you can have a little bleeding too. Mm -hmm. uh, Angela, I don't think I've ever had any bruising from you. So that's... Then, yeah, then we're lucky because, you know, even as a good practitioner can right. be, you can set up bruising. There's a couple quick um, things that you can do to prevent, like don't take ibuprofen, um, aspirin. Um, you know, sometimes I've heard fish oils um, can raise the risk, certain teas. I have a lovely client who drinks um, a green teas all the time, and I can tell she's had her smoothies. So, oh, no. you know, um, so those can thin your blood and make you bruise more, but we wouldn't get that's lucky. Good. That's good to bring up because I think people think that if you take an ibuprofen before you go, that it's not going to hurt as bad. It will help raise your risk of bruising. We'll right. go up. Yeah. So, yeah, so bleeding. It, so for afterwards, actually, um, for me, the best thing, well, you know, you can use concealer. Um, and if it's bruised, a little heavier concealer, maybe. Or for me, what I do is I have a sponge. And again, I'll take some concealer, I'll wet the sponge so it goes on, um, or put it on dry, because then it goes on a little thicker. Mm -hmm. And I dab, 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 dab. Okay. You know, do you have a favorite brand? The, you know, or 
it's so hard. Like for me, I, with my makeup kit, uh, for me, just personally, uh, I, I don't use concealer. I'm, okay. I'm knock on wood. I'm using uh -huh. five, and I don't really have anything under, you know, these right now, but I have used them. Um, I actually have some in my drawer. Uh, but um, you know, anything, just like CoverGirl, nothing that is going to cost you too much. Do you know what I mean? All this stuff isn't going to be that expensive, but find something that works for you. Most people already have a concealer if they have. Okay. Um, yeah. Or like just taking your foundation just as fine. Or, yeah, but I was yeah. just going to say, or okay. just your foundation. Because if I have that in my purse or something, I just take it out if I'm going to go somewhere afterwards. And mm -hmm. I just, you know, kind of pat it on so it's a little thicker over there. And these are small I, I wanted puncture wounds, but they're small uh, injections. Small injections, so, tiny yes. areas, yeah. um, uh, spot treatments. It's just the most common areas um, I see for bruising um, right here when we yeah. try to go for this one. Uh, yeah. That's a likelihood. Um, sometimes I will place a little bit towards the middle. Once in a while, there will be one there for people. So for the most part, those that and just like towards the middle of the forehead has a tendency to bruise and then for filler down here yep. on the sides really pretty common um could bruise not that it does every time it's just that we can't I mean we can't really see and one of my uh clients is she works in phlebotomy and she's you know she's like there's so many blood vessels in your face she's like she's like you're lucky you miss them <laughs> you know well, she's like you know you just can't get in there and out without a lot of folks you know, maybe getting a little bruise but, and what i would say too is if you're going anywhere afterwards just make sure you have something in your purse that you can maybe cover it a little bit and uh, and then some powder over it I have never had a problem, like I said, personally afterwards, like mm -hmm. really dealing with anything. I mean, maybe a small like bruise in one little spot or something. But again, it's so small that you're, it's not like it's going to be bruised all the way under your eye or wherever the part was. Yeah. It's going to yeah. be. I think most time I, I would say there's a rare opportunity that I have made someone have get a little shiner, but typically that is. Um, more involved if they had taken a blood thinner and didn't know it and you know even alcohol um, so sometimes yeah. I'll get ladies who went out for a luncheon they had some some alcohol yeah. and um, if you poke them oh, just know yeah. too because that's like with microblading anything that you're getting done don't like caffeine alcohol mm -hmm. ibuprofen those are good to stay away from because they do thin your blood and it yeah. can affect your treatment <laughs> And they recommend up to two weeks prior to the treatment if you can. I, I mean, realistically, I don't know if, if everybody can stay two weeks away from ibuprofen. I can't, you know, I'm, I get achy. Um, so I, I do think like 48 hours to 72 hours, a couple, a couple days before, if you can do it, you know. Be aware of it, yeah. Before. Yeah. <laughs> um, but okay, we're coming up on our time. But uh, sure. so next week... What do we, do we want to maybe cover the neck? I know we were talking about maybe doing a procedure. Uh, you do something. What do you do? Um, a couple of things we can do and we can talk about it. So um, sculpture, which is a different kind of filler. I do love for the neck and um, there's plasma pen. There's well, that's micro what you were talking about doing on me. The plasma pen. Was that right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's that's one way you do and microneedling is the other common area. I, mean, I like to and even some laser. We can just blend it all up and and um, next are multiple treatments, but we'll go into that next time. Yeah, we'll yeah. talk about it. Maybe we can do something on me and show them like what Ooh, a, what a treatment is like. It. Yeah. You just sign yourself up for some love. <laughs> you go. know, <laughs> zap, zap, zap. <laughs> just do this. <laughs> yeah, I just hold on to my stress ball while that's happening. And I'll be like, does it hurt, Tracy? Does it hurt? Does it hurt? Does it feel good? <laughs> and like, it doesn't matter. Just keep going. Just go. Just go. Just, just go. go. Yep. Let's get it over with. All right. Um, awesome. Okay. Well, good. This was a fun talk, and I think we got a lot of information out. Oh, I hope. I hope it's not too confusing, everybody. I I, I hope that helps to make people feel a little bit more relaxed about coming in. Most injectors or places, if if you're new to it, they're probably going to be conservative. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just don't expect and talk to them beforehand about it. That's it. Just tell them, yeah. you know, talking, yeah. 
and what you're afraid of, your fears, or what you want yeah. it to be like, and yeah. you can get what you want. I love it. Okay, right? great. Okay, okay, well, we'll see you in the next uh, Esthetician Talks. Okay, all right. All right. Talk to you later. Okay. Bye. Bye.